welcome back to another episode and we are taking a look at yet another thin client um, this one's on a very special diet because it's extremely small now if it's not apparent from the size of my hand versus the box this is the wise 3040 and if you take a look at the usb ports versus the size of the box or at the back where we have two display ports two usb ports a gigabit ethernet jack and a power connector and you still haven't figured out how small this is this is extremely small um this is a ssd and that's how small the thin client is it's extremely thin and so we'll take a look at this we'll open it up and see what the specs are the wise 3040 is so small that i'll not bring out my tablet today for the specs i'll instead bring out my phone um and it is an intel atom x5 z 8 350 it's a quad core uh, at 1.44 gigahertz it does boot boost to about 1.9 or something on us on a single core uh, it has an embedded 8 gigabyte of emmc and an embedded 2 gigabyte of ram so both of those are soldered on not changeable you can't do anything about it uh, that's what you get the only thing different from most other thin clients is that this has a 5 volt power supply instead of a 19 or a 12 volt one, uh, which is something you need to keep in mind because it doesn't obviously say that it's a 5 volt part here. Uh, so it, you have to take a look at the sticker uh, at the back and you can just barely make out that it is a 5 volt power supply right there. Um, again, this somehow was came from FIL India. Uh, I just bought it off of uh, our local um, secondhand market. So uh, let's take it about, let's see what's inside. I've made some mods to this. I'll walk you through the mod. It's not something uh, major. So let's crack this open and take a look. Um, there are no screws involved. It's all um, just like, just comes apart like that. You just pry it off and the entire thing just opens up. Um, and so you can see that I have a cell right there on RTC battery and one of the reason is that it um, it came with its RTC battery and it was really difficult to find the exact size it came with so I have a bunch of these uh, PCB RTC batteries um, uh, battery holders that laying around and I just saw uh, soldered that to the correct wires and pasted it here found an empty enough space and it seems to be working just fine this is necessary because it's one of those systems that likes to complain a whole lot when uh, it's not getting the power it needs uh, on the rtc uh, pins and so it, like fails to boot sometimes it just becomes very unstable with rtc so that's i am guessing your spi either that's an spi flash or that's the ethernet um transformer i'm not sure might be the ethernet transformer looking at the pinout um probably the ethernet transformer that's your memory two gigabytes of memory i'm not sure if those are the only two chips or there are more of the other end we'll take a look here's a wi-fi card and the fun thing is it's not a generic wi-fi card it's a very specific wi-fi card for this board and some other ones because there's no usb there's no pci or any such common and easy to use interface on uh, this header now this is directly spi so that's a wi-fi over spi card wi-fi and bluetooth i guess um so if this breaks or if you want a replacement it's not easy you can't get an off-the-shelf m.2 or uh, a mini pci wi-fi card and hope that it works because it won't it's not usb it's not um m.2 it's um uh, it's not PCIe, it's just its own thing. And and I'm guessing there's the clear CMOS button right there. So um, let's take it further apart, which I means I think I'll have to remove the Wi-Fi pins and then open it up. So that's the whole board out. Um, 
not much to see on the top everything's a heat sink and here at the bottom it's just uh, your airflow hole vents and just the Wi-Fi strips Wi-Fi and Bluetooth strips so you have one here and the other there so I'm not sure which one's which but one's for Wi-Fi and one's for Bluetooth or one's for 2.4 gigahertz and one point one's for 5 gigahertz I'm assuming so let's take this apart I hope there aren't any other surprises because I've already broken the plastic a bit on the top case okay and that comes about fairly easily so there are two more uh, memory chips here so that's your entire um, two gigabytes of five twelve gigabyte per chip megabyte per chip and um, that's your sock that has everything it's a sock sock so um, has pretty much everything on it uh, your memory controller your networking and your uh, usb buses and everything else that's your emmc i've been having issues with that emmc and i think it's uh, it's past its prime at this moment and it might be uh, either have it might have had some right flay failures or something like that so it's not really working all that well um, again you have so this does feel like an ethernet transformer you have half of it here and then half of it there so it might be specially built for um, thin form factor systems where I'm not sure if it goes through the PCB uh, onto the other side it could probably um, if there's a cutout but it just seems like uh, it's it's sold in a pair so it might actually go through the PCB I cannot see it extremely clearly but right let's uh, wash up the thermal goop and um, and see the, the SOC itself right so here's the SOC let it focus so, okay, and no markings here it's just uh, plain die uh, and then you have your memory chips right next to it as we've seen and then uh, what's the SK Hynix EMMC what was the memory micron for the memory can barely make it out um, yeah so that's the main board it's almost it is an SBC for all intents and purposes like there's no denying that so it's an SBC you know with a fancyish case uh, so I wanted to talk about a few things uh, with the soldered in memory and the EMMC that's probably more than worn, worn out at this point I've always wondered why people usually buy these and these seem to be fairly common and fairly um, you know they whenever they show up in the second-hand market they go uh, sort of they get sold out very fast and it turns out because of the size and the fact that it's x86 and then it's sold in the second hand market at even a cheaper cost uh, folks just buy it now just for the sake of having small clusters so like people do with raspberry pis they'll have a cl larger cluster and then run kubernetes or whatever they want on it people do this uh, the same thing with this and Again, if they want an x86 target instead of running VMs or, uh, you know, folks don't, not, not a lot of folks are a fan of running VM. Uh, instead of doing that, they end up just buying these in bulk. And in some cases, you can get them so cheap that it's actually cheaper than having a system that can run, say, 16 of these in a VM, right? So 16 by 2 to 32 gigs free memory. Uh, so you actually at least have uh, 48 to 64 gigs of memory on a system and then enough cores here you get uh, a quad core system with two gigs of memory and you can have multiple of them on the network and if you are doing either some form of um, security analysis you want a bunch of targets or you are doing cluster management with kubernetes or whatever um, you have a bunch of bare metal systems to work with 
and this is one of the use cases. So with that said, uh, one of the few problems I've had apart from the EMC and apart from the uh, RTC battery has been this USB 3 port. I could not get anything to boot off of it for whatever reason. It works fine when it's already booted into a system, but for whatever reason, I have not been able to get anything booted, whether it's a, a, a thumb drive or um, it's an SSD using a, a adapter, but just doesn't work. So not sure what's going on there. So let's put it all back together and plug in the uh, board to the display and go through our test uh, uh, test results and see where it stands compared to the other 10 clients. All right, so here we are within Debian. Uh, let's take a look at a few things. Right, so first off, LSCPU, that should give us a idea. So it's an Intel Atom X5 Z8350. So as you can see, it does clock up to 1.9 GHz in turbo uh, and also has a much lower base clock at four, at 480 MHz for power saving and whatnot. All right, so let's take a look at the test results. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that this uh, thin client is limited by RAM by a whole lot. So it's not um, a little bit limited. It's two, giga, uh, two gigabytes on four cores. So when multi-threaded tasks run, it, they eat up RAM very quickly and we'll be able to see some of that in our um, tests today. So we have the brown one is, not that it's going to be very obvious, the brown one is the Vice 3040. Um, so it's there and you can take a look at it, provided I can get it centered at where it stands, uh, but more importantly, the graphs. GL Mark II performs fairly well. It's around the Celeron J1900 on the uh, VXLi toner, uh, but still slower than one of the Radeons in the Vice ZX0. Tiny Membench is closer to the VXLi toner on DDR3, so, but it's still three gigabytes a second, fair enough for such a small box. I'm not going to expect it to break any records, especially with the iTona being a full-fledged uh, Celeron core um, with a proper 1333 megahertz DDR bus. I think this one's pretty low. Uh, GMP bench, it it's mediocre. It doesn't, you know, fare too well. Um, it's about what the Dell uh, 5010 scores. So in the ballpark of that performance, um, I don't remember, Was is this hyper-threaded? No, it's not. So for four physical cores, it's actually quite slow. Provided that the 5010 and ZX0 are both um, just dual core without hyper-threading. Um, X264, it's a bit better because it's a newer core. Um, you get five frames a second instead of um, two. And dark table, it's uh, it scores fairly well yeah, even compared to older uh, the Dell 5010 and ZX0, although not as good as the Celeron in the Itona. And similar for most of the other dark table results, it's actually a bit worse in uh, masker and uh, server rack. Uh, so here the Itona really shines, but we are still quite a way away from it on the 3040. Browser bench is also uh, nothing to write home about. Um, it's again, it's in this case, it's closer to ZX0 instead of the 5010. And uh, this is for the Aries 5, Aries 6, Aries 6 browser benchmark. And then on speedometer, it fares a bit better um, coming in second after the Itona. So uh, that's about it. I hope you all uh, like this video and subscribe for more. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.